please have a seat in the office. I expect Mr. Harrington any minute now. Thank you very much. Mary, you sit there. Good afternoon, Mr. Harrington. How did things go in court this morning? Very well, Susan. Very well, thank you. <clears throat> Are the Boyds here yet? Yes, in your office. Fine. Hold my calls. Bill, good to see you again, Fred. Hello, Mary. Say, I haven't seen you since our PTA committee last September. How are the kids? Well, Amy's better, but none of those tests seem to show much. Uh, Roger's starting Little League next and week. And Beth is finally old enough to go to nursery school. Last, I'll have some time to myself. Well, what's up? Mary and I are here because we want... We've decided to get a divorce, and we want you to handle it for us. You know us. That's why we've come. Bill and I... We need your help, Fred. You're someone we trust. We've been thinking about this for a long time. Uh, it isn't easy after 13 years, but it's got to be this way. We kept trying for the kids, but it just doesn't work. Okay, I, I really didn't expect this. Uh, it's really a hard decision, but you see, in, in my experience, sometimes this really is the best thing, even for the kids. I'll try to do what I can to help. And are you asking that I represent both of you? Yes, Fred, that's definitely what we want. Now, it won't be messy. Mary and I have it all worked out. We've come to an agreement. Here, I'll show you. Now, here you can see we've listed everything, all our property, our debts, and at the bottom here, you can see how we decided to split things up. It's pretty cut and dried, and we, it just didn't seem to us like we needed two lawyers. And we don't want this to turn into a battle. We've already had enough, enough of that. Well, we thought it would hold the cost down this way. We really can't afford to do it any other way. Will you help us, Fred? We'll have to talk some things over first before I can answer that, Mary. For one thing, I'm not sure it's wise for me to represent both of you. But since we're in agreement, we already have it. We've got it worked out. What's the problem? The problem concerns you, Bill. As you know, I do some collection work for your boss, Joe Peters. So? And your name has come up in my recent conversations with him. In what sense? Too many used car customers are defaulting on their payments. Peters thinks that the salesmen are to blame. They're, they're too aggressive, too sloppy with their credit checks. Since you're the sales manager, well, look, we're friends, Bill, and I'll be frank with you. Peters thinks you're one of the main causes of the problem. Now, suppose he asked me to get involved in that, in that area. Do you see what I mean? Peters? <laughs> Don't worry about him. He's been saying the same thing to my face. And he's been saying it once a month, ever since I started working for him, two years ago. But every time the crunch comes, he's back in my office, apologizing, begging me to stay on. Look, don't you think he wants to keep a high-volume business? Well, of course he does, except the day after he meets with his accountant. It's always been back and forth like that. And don't forget that practically every attorney in town works for Peters. I mean, he really passes those collection cases around. And, you know, you're not the only one he's complained to about his salesman. Anyhow, where are Mary and I going to find a lawyer who isn't tied up with my boss's business? I see your point. I, I guess we really don't have a problem there, but I had to raise it with you. Uh, let's move on. Let's talk about your legal grounds for divorce. What grounds are there? I think we can forget about desertion, failure to support, uh, imprisonment, chronic alcoholism, um, impotency. Oh, scratch that. Adultery? No. So that leaves a catch-all category called cruel and abusive treatment. Most people use that one. It's vague enough to uh, fit a lot of problems. That doesn't happen. Cruel and abusive? That's not like Bill and me. I couldn't say that. I... You have to remember, it's a technical legal term, not a moral one. But why does it have to be someone's fault? There's something else now, isn't there? I, I mean, I thought there was a no-fault divorce now. I'm afraid our state hasn't adopted irreconcilable differences, which is what you're talking about. But you can still do it, can't you? Jill, 
She's a friend of mine. Jill moved to another state to live with her parents for a while. She said she got a no-fault divorce. It sounded so easy. My parents wouldn't mind. I, I could visit them. I was thinking maybe we should... It means getting an out-of-state lawyer. It, it means saying things in court that aren't true. There's more uncertainty because you get involved with technical questions of intent and domicile. I, I don't think it's worth it. And besides, it'll be more expensive. But, but if that's the way you want to go, I can refer you to some attorneys in town who do get involved with that kind of set-up divorce. Well, I see what you mean. Okay, but Fred, supposing we stay here. Uh, well, what do we have to do to show cruel and abusive treatment? It's pretty routine these days. Everybody realizes that divorce is here to stay. You'll find some judges that are applying standards for what is cruel and abusive that uh, really aren't very tight. Usually goes this way. The wife makes allegations. The husband admits them without making a court appearance. The parties submit a property settlement and a custody arrangement worked out beforehand, and the judge makes it final without, after he's looked it over. That's all? It sounded worse than that. What does she have to say? What kind of allegations? Well, there are two ways you can show cruel and abusive treatment. First, you can show some act of physical abuse. We're not oh, like come that. come on, Fred. No. Something like that would be very clear. You're, you're sure there was never a time there was some physical contact in the, in the heat of anger? No. Never. Okay, well, can you show some physical effects resulting from mental cruelty? I don't know. That doesn't sound like us. Well, uh, what's important here is to show some physical effects which can be independently verified. For example, uh, do you have frequent arguments? Yes. Yes. Mary, we'll assume that you're going to be making the allegations, so we'll concentrate on your answers for the moment. Now, these arguments, they, they make you anxious and nervous, don't they? Oh, yes, they do. <clears throat> well, then. We need to show some clear physical effect produced by your anxiety, okay? For instance, uh, are your hands shaking, or uh, have you lost some weight recently? Have you had trouble sleeping at night, or something like that? Well, I'm the one who doesn't get any sleep. She sleeps all the time. I am losing weight now, but then, oh, I don't think... You see, I'm on this new diet. Yeah, she's got a case of nerves, that's for sure. I mean, that's been one of our problems. She's always getting too worked up about everything. Bumping into corners, dropping things, crying. Bill's right. I, I guess I am too nervous. And I've been upset a lot, especially this last year when things got worse with us. Maybe I get these rashes on my arms. Maybe that's why. Have you seen a doctor? No, I didn't. If it wasn't something obvious, I was embarrassed. I, I could have used something to steady myself, I guess. Maybe you should see Dr. Williams. Just talk to him about your problems with Bill. Well, uh, I could. Because if you were to seek medical advice, it would help clarify how the problems with Bill affect you physically. You could even use a letter from him. I see. I'll try to arrange something next week. Also, keep a diary. Maybe you can even reconstruct some past events that fit in. Uh, write down how you're feeling and the marital problems that come up, and uh, when, when you come back, we'll go over the grounds again. I don't think we'll have any problems, but uh, we're going to need a lot of material to support the petition, and I find a diary often helps. Well, I can help her with that. Uh, okay, let's uh, get to the property settlement. Earnings of 35000 equity in house and furniture. Two, two cars. Now the settlement you're proposing, Mary gets the house, the station wagon, and two-thirds of your earnings. Is that right? That's right. Well, uh, I don't know. That's very generous of you, Bill, but um, do you think you can manage this? Well, we, we want to get it over with. No, this is the only way we could make it work. Now, that's what Mary said she wanted. That's right, Fred. We've both had to compromise a bit. I'm also concerned about this heavy debt load. Mm, yeah, and it just seems to get worse. Well, Amy's disability is the biggest problem. Now, that new series of tests she had last year really set us back. And it's rough enough these days for any family of five to make ends meet. I can imagine. Is there anything I ought to know that uh, isn't included here? 
Well, I don't think... Well, on second thought, there may be something. What is it? Well, my taxes... Uh, I mean my tax deductions. Well, being a salesman, I've got a lot of business expenses, and uh, there's always the medical bills. Uh, I may have gone out on a limb on some of, the, some of my deductions. Well, I'd have to bring you in a couple of returns to show you what I mean. Have you been audited by the IRS? Uh, no. Well, we probably don't have to worry about tax returns anyway, not in a case like this. All I have to do is present a fair and reasonable property settlement to the court. We don't want to confuse things. You're being awfully generous under the circumstances, Bill. Well, that's what we've worked out. So there's only one more problem then, and that's the children. How do they seem to be taking this? We haven't told them, not in so many words. I, I think Amy knows. How old are they now? I keep forgetting you haven't seen them in a while. Amy's 12, Roger is almost nine, and Beth is four. Mary will keep Roger and Beth. Amy will live with me. Oh, I expected that Mary would have custody of all the kids. That's what usually happens. Amy needs me. You're not home enough, Bill. You don't realize the amount of time I spent... She and I Amy spent... never got along. Now, don't you know the way you lose your temper? You can't handle Amy and you know it, so why don't you just face up to it? Amy and I have a very special, very close relationship. The girl's a teenager, Bill. There's always fighting with mothers at that age. Amy is my daughter as much as she is yours. I love her, too. Is it really practical for you to take over full-time care of Amy, Bill? I'm not sure I can see how you'll be able to handle it. Well, I'll get a housekeeper. I've already checked it out. Now, Amy's in school until shortly before 5, and that's when I get off anyway. You've never gotten home by 5 well, I can since do it, we Fred. were married. I'm certain of it. Even if Mary had custody, it would be your right, and if I may say so, your duty to visit them regularly. There's something special between Amy and I. Now, she needs me, and I know it. Now, Mary can't handle her. I feel very strongly about this, Fred. Look, Bill, you know I want to help you. I've seen a lot of families go through this, and I feel very strongly myself about what happens to the kids. I don't want to see them get hurt any more than they have to. Now, I have to feel comfortable about the financial and custody arrangements, or I can't take the case. I know how you feel about this, but... But you work pretty long hours, and uh, it's going to be even tougher with two households to support. I'm not sure that Amy will get what she needs uh, in the time that's left over. And what about Mary? Won't she miss Amy? If that's the way it's going to be, I'm not sure I can go forward here. Well, now, wait a minute, Fred. Wait. Uh, don't get me wrong. I want what's best for the kids, too. I'm certainly not opposed to working out something here. We can work it out, Fred, but we need your help. If that's the case, I mean, if you can assure me that you'll both cooperate to work out a custody arrangement that I can feel comfortable with, then uh, I'm prepared to take the case. Oh, thanks, Odd. I'm so oh, relieved. Thanks, Fred. That's great. We'll be able to work out the rough points. Oh, we haven't discussed your fee. Whatever's fair, Fred. You know more about that. It will be cheaper, though, won't it? I mean, since both of us are coming here. The problem is, we don't know whether the judge will accept the property settlement, nor do we know the valuation of the house and your other assets. You see, my fee is usually based upon a percentage of what's split up, and uh, we don't know that in your case. So perhaps we can put the fee question aside for a while. But uh, I can assure you that the fee will be well below what it would have been had you had two attorneys and had to pay separate fees. We understand. That sounds fine with us. Thanks, Fred. Then I take it that you both want me to go forward, representing both of you, that is. Oh, yes. Definitely. Susan, will you please bring in a retainer agreement? We should set up another.